Greetings to you, friends and brethren around the world. I decided to give this video just to remind everyone that over the past decade, we have produced more than 200 videos dedicated to encouraging and warning the churches of God who we believe are the seventh era Laodicea. Of course, the door was shut on the sixth era of Philadelphia. Jesus said he was standing outside of the churches of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Now, why is Jesus standing outside the door? The previous era had an open door. Jesus opened a door to Herbert Armstrong to raise up the Philadelphia era and to preach the gospel worldwide and built the church, the spiritual temple. And marvelous and wonderful work was done under that apostle, supported by the worldwide church of God. Now, as soon as Mr. Armstrong died, Jesus shut that door, thus ending the commission of Matthew 24, 14. The gospel stopped being preached around the world. Please see our video the gospel has been preached. That era of Philadelphia was over. Its work was done. The seventh era soon began. You know, another reason for this video is because over time, I have received remarks, both positive and negative, about the videos we produce. And I've always said uh, in some of my videos, uh, I've said, I shouldn't say always have said, but I've said in some of my videos, scoffers and mockers notwithstanding. Because they, they're going to mock, they're going to scoff. There are those Herbert W. Armstrong haters. They call them us Armstrongites and whatever names they want to call us. We know where that attitude comes from. It's an attitude from a, a being that hates humanity. Uh, a diabolical being. That's where those thoughts come from. Yet, in those comments, there are people that are sincere and they sincerely want to know, who is Michael Venish? Are you a minister? Uh, why do you do these videos? And, and, and who gives you the authority to do what you're doing? That's fair enough. But that's fine. Let me start from when God called me. He called me back in South Africa in late 1966. I was baptized in 1968 after doing much study, attending the feast in 1968 with my family. My wife, Janetta, came to understand the truth. Well, she came to understand it quite secretly, you see. She was opening up my church literature mail during that period of 1966 until I was baptized, 68. She'd read it and then reseal it in an the original envelopes and hand me this came from you. This came for you today in the mail. That's fine. She came to understand the truth. In 1969, we observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread up in Johannesburg. Now, during that feast uh, on a Wednesday, I found a job. That afternoon, there was an afternoon we had off. And soon thereafter, in May of 69, we moved up to Johannesburg from Port Elizabeth. When arriving there, Jim and Pam Niccolo took us into their home and cared for my family and myself until we could find our own accommodation. That is godly Christian people. Now, my lovely wife, Janetta, was baptized at the end of Atonement, 1969, by Mr. Andre van Belkem in Robert Fay, the director's swimming pool at his house. 
Jeanette and I both grew in faith. We grew in truth and understanding. I was given tremendous opportunities. I first went to Spokesman's Club, then given opportunities to give sermonettes. And then I was placed on a visiting program and trained by Mr. Sidney Hull as his assistant. We visited brethren and preached in churches in the western and northern Transvaal, as it was known back then. I traveled with Mr. Hull to Botswana, visiting and preaching there as well. Mr. Andre van Belken became the pastor of the Johannesburg Church, and he appointed me a visiting area south of Johannesburg. So Jeanette and I took care of five families in the south of Johannesburg. What a privilege that was, brethren. Now, as we are all aware, an apostasy occurred soon after the apostle Herbert Armstrong died in 1986. That's when he died. By 1989, people started fleeing from the worldwide Church of God. Of course, Mr. Gerald Flurry of the Philadelphia Church of God was fired that year. And in 1993, Roderick Meredith started Global. And later on in 1980, he, he broke up with that group and started the Living Church of God. At a 1995 conference in Indianapolis, Ohio, United States, the United Church was formed out of a group of 162 ministers and wives. Of course, eventually, out of that united group, many splintered off and started to form their own churches of God. Even Cogwa, Church of God, a worldwide association, rebelled and left united. So the scattering continued. I was ordained a local elder and later on raised to preaching elder. And I've never claimed to be anything other than a minister of Jesus Christ. We, my wife and I, attend both PCG, that's Philadelphia Church of God, and Restore Church of God. And due to certain problems, we eventually just stayed at home, feeding members I knew with sermons through email, who had my contact details. By mid-2012, we were in Texas. Maybe it was a little bit later in 2012. I received a phone call on a Sabbath. And this individual asked me if I would, he's seen some of my small, short videos and listened to my sermons, would I mind assisting the man who started Vigilant Church of God with sermons and sermonettes? So I said, sure, I don't mind. And that individual called me and I started sending them sermons. Eventually that man walked away from the Vigilant Church of God, walked away from 50 members and left me to handle that flock of people. So I stayed, Jeanette and I stayed and worked with them. I've never started a splinter off group, never. I believe Jesus, the head of his church, was, be, was the beginning and final phase. It was beginning the final phase of this work. Yes, that's what he was beginning when I received that phone call back in late 2012. He was beginning the final phase of the work of the seventh lamp. The work to the church of the Laodiceans. He was doing it by having his voice standing outside of a locked door which the church of God, those scattered churches, locked Christ out. And we were delivering his voice via videos, which he, through his angel, inspired. You can go and read Revelation 1 verse 1. That's how God works. That's how God the Father, through Christ, through an angel, works. So what is my authority? Well, in Revelation 3.14, it states, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, Write these things, says the Amen. Jesus the Christ said that. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Yes, he said, write scripts that will produce videos that will warn and encourage the church to turn back, to open the door to Christ so he can come in and teach them the whole truth once again. The truth 
that uh, Jude spoke about in Jude 1 verse 3, to contend for the faith that was once delivered to you, brethren. You see, dear brethren, all the ministry of all these scattered churches tell Jesus in Revelation 3.17. They say, these leaders of all these churches say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. We do not need you, Jesus. Stay outside the door. But Jesus Christ, a loving Savior, tells them through this work, don't you know that you are wretched, that you are miserable, that you are poor, that you are blind and you are naked? Brethren, it's been almost 58 years since I was drafted into the Church of God. My loving and faithful wife, Janetta, died in 2018, as well as many hundreds of other members of the former Worldwide Church of God. There's no time to die, brethren. There's no time to waste on scoffing or disbelief. Go and prove this work. That's all you have to do. Think. Go and prove the work. Look at all these scattered groups. Is that Jesus Christ's work? Is his body scattered into pieces? Go and prove it in the scriptures. Go to our website, vigilancecog.com and answer that knock of Jesus, not of Michael Venish, not of any man, but of Jesus Christ. Take your Bible and read it and study and come to an understanding where you are today. And then, brethren, come help us reach out to Christ's bride. Thank you for listening to this message. I produced it specially for you. This is Michael Venish for the Vigilance Church of God. Saying goodbye, brethren, and goodbye, friends.